Hi everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Season six of Iyana, Fix My Life comes to a close. We discuss the conclusion, pride versus prejudice. What a way to end the season. That's all coming up next. So part two takes off where part one left off. We're still left with Rita, Ramesha's mother, and Iyana. They're still sitting at the table discussing how they feel and how Rita's letter plays a big part in starting this counseling. So Rita finally admits that she thinks that Ramesha's not good enough for her, her son. So Iyana says, okay, thank you. Some honesty. You're finally expressing how you feel. And Ramesha's mother says, you know what? When we first met, I really wanted to get to know you, but you had this wall up and I couldn't get to know you because you were just so, when you walked into the room, you had this essence of, I don't know, thinking you're one way and you're not. I don't know how to explain it. So Iyanla says, what she's trying to tell you is that you have an emotional wall that doesn't make you approachable. You come off as if you don't want to be bothered. What somebody has to say is not important. And Rita says, well, you know, that, that wasn't my intention. That's not my fault. That's not what I meant. And Iyanla says, look, this might not have been your intention, but she's telling you, she's expressing to you why you are so difficult to talk to. Inyanla says, look, you wrote these things in the letter about Ramesha's mother and that she's probably drug addicted and that's why she behaves the way that she's behaves. And she said, did you ever talk to Ramesha's mother? Did you ever ask her about that time frame in her life where she was abusing drugs and she was going through a difficult time? And she said, well, no, that's what Ramesha's telling me. That's her experience. Why would I question it? Why would I go to the mother? And she says, take that moment now and talk to her. So she says, tell her how long you abused drugs. And she said, well, I abused drugs for about three to six months um, in my life and I was going through a difficult time and of course Rita was just like so your friend had a difficult time and you were going through a lot so that caused you to take drugs and she's just like well yeah that's what happened in my life you notice that Rita is so judgmental instead of listening to her and her experience with drugs she's already judging her so this happened so you're taking drugs like why would you combat with that why would you question why somebody started to take drugs or abuse drugs like everybody's life is different so I found that very, very interesting. So Ayala said, look, Rita has these opinions because, of course, this is something Ramesha has told her. And she would only know this information from Ramesha. So let's talk to Ramesha because Ramesha's experience without you being in her life while you were abusing drugs may be different to her. And maybe you guys need to actually talk about the facts and what actually happened. So they take a break. And now we have in the room Ramesha and her mother. Before they go into the room, Iyanla, of course, she tells Rita, look, I don't think this, I don't think this has to do anything with race. I think this has to do with culture and how you're perceiving the world through your filter, through your white privilege. Because without meeting anybody, you came to these assumptions that somebody went through certain things to make them who they were. I mean, she could have grown up with a silver spoon in her mouth, but she still assumed that Ramesha and Ramesha's mother was just terrible and they're just just everything in their family is drug addicted and she just viewed things incorrectly so Ramesha and Ramesha's mom and Yana they're in a room and they want them to talk they want to want them to discuss what's going on in their lives mother to daughter so Ramesha expresses that she is just you know, pretty much numb and emotionless to what's going on. And Iyanla says, well, what did you go through? Because you are completely emotionless. You are just, you just seem like a shell. You don't have any reaction to anything. What is going on? And she tells her, well, you know, growing up, and we had to stay with blank and they beeped out the name because I don't think that they they wanted to keep that other person's privacy 
Uh, maybe there was something contractually that they don't want their name revealed, but I'm guessing this is the person that she stayed with along with her mother while her mother was going through a tough time. And she said that household mom was just arguing all the time and that person used to call us bees and whores all the time and it was just constant fighting and I am the way that I am because it's just protective. I don't want to speak to anyone and I just don't want to be around that. So she was just emotionless. She was just kind of there in her shell just like oh well, they yelled at us all the time and it was just emotional abuse and she just didn't have it no tears it was just pain but it wasn't coming out and the mother says yes i'm aware that this person can say certain things and yana said well were you there and she said well yeah i was there and you know her reaction was just to tell ramisha you know just let's just live with it that's just the way that person is not thinking that this is a child that's ingesting all of that emotion and ingesting all of that negative energy and not kind of checking that person and saying wait Whoa, you don't talk that way to my daughter. That didn't happen. So Iyama says to Ramisha, you are trying to paint this perfect lifestyle in your mind of being perfect and doing everything right. Have you ever allowed yourself to tell yourself it's okay to be mad with her? And she points to her mother. She wants her to know it's okay to be upset with your mother because you went through what you have went through. And then you start to see a little bit more of the emotion coming out of Ramisha. And Ramisha says, and Iyana says, look, put your hand on your chest, on your heart. Let it come out of your heart, out of your mind, and from your heart. And just let it pour out. And Ramisha says, I remember that I was so upset as a child that you couldn't see your inner worth. And you always needed a man to validate you. And this man that was always around you always had negative things to say about women, about us. And I couldn't stand it. It made me so angry. And at that time, you see the tears start to come out and the anger. So finally, we have this not trying to paint this image like I just think everything's okay and I'm trying to be a good mom. And Iyana says, well, what else is going on? And she said, well, growing up, I always wanted to prove those statements wrong, that I'm not a bee or that I'm not a whore. So I tried to live my life so perfectly to where I wouldn't live into those standards. And Iyana said, that's very dangerous. Because what you're doing, if you're living to prove somebody else wrong, you are not living in your own light. You are not living up to your own expectations. You are living a life to satisfy that person. And you can get lost in all of that. And it was if she had an epiphany and saying, wow, that's right. Because you can get lost trying to live up to somebody else's expectations. So the mother was very respect, respect, uh, receptive and Rabisha was very open and you could see that start to pour out. You could see that she's not used to expressing, expressing her emotions a lot. She's used to keeping it inside. So you could see the wheels churning and you really, as a viewer, you start to say, this is the beginning phase. I really have hope for this mother and this daughter. I really loved this next scene because Iyana tells Ramisha, look, I do a lot of stuff. I travel. There's a lot of things I know. There's a lot of things I don't know. But what I do know is that your husband, Christian, when he sees you, when he talks about you, his whole world lights up. His soul lights up. That man loves you. And just remember not to take your pain or any abuse or anything, any situations. Please don't put that off on your husband and don't call him passive. His personality is just gentle. Do not try to mold and shift him into this person that he's not. Let him be himself, the person that you fell in love with. And she just makes it known that just know that. Just know that Christian loves you. And he is not the person to get the bad end of the stick and not getting your time, your energy, listening, everything. Just know that everything that's going on in your life, that Christian loves you. And that's the person that's in your corner. That's the person that you can talk to. That's the person that you share a life with. So she said, keep that in mind. So now we have Iyanla, Rita, and Christian. This is this moment where Iyanla really wants these two to talk and bear anything or any communications that they haven't been able to do because it's just been so, so much ruckus and so much negative energy in the air. And she says, Rita, I just want you to listen and we're gonna let Christian talk. He's going to say something that he's mustered up courage to finally say. So he restates 
the time in his life when he was a child, he was about six or seven in Germany and his experience in being raped. And you could tell he was, you could see it in his eyes. He just took whatever he had mustered to tell this again and explain this experience to his mother. And Iyanla says, look, this was your experience. You have to let her know. So he restates again. He says, when I was a child and I was walking home, a man asked me, did I want to see a turtle? He took me into the bushes and he raped me. And the entire time, Rita's just like, just stone faced. Mm. Mm. And he said, I went home after that, I walked home. And when I got there, you weren't there. So I just sat down and watched television. And she still just read us just emotion. Mm. Mm, no. Mm. And Iyama's just like, just listen, what are you talking about? She's like, no, that's, mm -mm. And Iyama's like, do you, do you hear what your son is telling you? Are you completely out of it that you don't understand what's going on here? And he proceeds to go on, and I felt that. And she's just, no, 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 no. I came after that. And Iyama says, whoa, wait, Christian, stop. Let's switch seats. So she wants to switch seats so she can look Rita in the eye and says, look, your son just told you that he was raped. Why are you not being receptive to that? Uh, uh, what is going on? And, and Rita says, well, I was there 10 minutes later. And she says, well, time out. You mean to tell me that your son just bared his soul about what happened and you're saying, oh, well, I was there 10 minutes later. She says, well, yeah, and, and now I'm hearing a different story. Before it was another story. And she says, you know what? <laughs> the lights are on in the house, but nobody's there. So in other words, everything that we're talking about, everything that we're dis discussing, it's not being ingested. It's just going in one ear out of the other. You are not there. She just looked like she was just engulfed in something else. She was there, but she wasn't physically or mentally there. Her son just told her some such a traumatic experience, and she had no reaction. But thinking of herself and saying, oh, well, put the blame on me because I wasn't there, and there was something I tried to do, and she's like... He's trying to tell you what happened and all you're thinking about is you and you defending yourself and being right. Quit trying to worry about being right. That's not the focus here. The focus is that he's telling you as a child, he didn't want to come to you because he felt as a child that you wouldn't love him anymore. Of course, I mean, come on, he was a child, you know? As an adult, you would think, well, why would he think something like that? But as a child, from a child's perspective, he was stating that this is why I didn't come to you before. And this is why I told a friend and not you directly because of the way that he felt he was a child. So Ayana says, look, Christian, take a break, breathe, get some water. I wanna talk to Rita. So as he's getting up, Rita says, oh, can I say something to him? And Ayana said, no, 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 no. Don't say nothing to him. Don't say nothing. Just Christian, get you something to drink, sit down, have a minute, breathe. I need to speak with Rita. So before Iyanla can talk to Rita, Rita says, you know what? I, I'm just, I just, when he first told me, he said one thing. His story is changing. When he was a child, his friend told me that he said that the man, you know, made him touch him in a sexual way and nothing sexual. There was no sexual intercourse that happened. So I just didn't think, and the whole time Iyan was looking at her like, and y'all know that black woman look like, say what you got to say, go ahead. It was like Iyana just wanted to kick her in the throat. Like, you've lost it. She was just looking at her like, mm-hmm. No sound, nothing. She just looked the look. So as she go, goes on to say that, and she says, Iyana says, you know what? Your son just told you all of that, and all you could do is try to defend yourself or, or make it seem like it's your fault. And then Rita says, well, you know what? Since I'm such a bad person, you know, I'll just stay away. You know, since I just don't know what to do and I'm such a bad mother, I'll just stay away. And Iyana says, okay, look. That's not what we're saying here. But after hearing you, you're the one that needs the psychiatrist. You're the one that needs counseling. Because you are far gone. You are not listening. And Rita says, well, what do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? What's the first step? And Yala says, seek counseling. Seek counseling quickly. Yes. And she does need to seek counseling because 
there's something there that's not allowing her. If some, if I had a child, okay, and that child says something like that to me, for one, I would, I would try, try to call, you know, somebody to do something that's not. <laughs> I'm thinking about regulating. I'm thinking about first of all, let me let me let me let me whoop they behind first, okay? Then you know, I it's emotion that oh my goodness, something traumatic has happened to somebody I love. What do I need to do to be there? I would be shedding some tears, and she, Miss Rita, she is just she's a shell. She's a complete shell. So they're trying to bring this all to a close. And Yanla, she gets Christian and Ramisha into the room after they both talk to their parents. And she says, look, with everything that's going on, this is what I want you to be aware of. Men marry their mothers. And there's something that you both saw in each other that merged those wounds and what you both needed. And that brought you together. She said, recognize that. And Ramisha, don't get in the habit of if your husband needs to tell you something and it's something emotionally that he wants to talk to, that you are not turning him away emotionally and judging him as passive because he is just a gentle personality. So don't judge that and assume that's where he's coming from. Take the time to talk to your husband and vice versa because she explains that marriage is destroyed from the inside out. It shouldn't be able to be destroyed from the outside in. If the household and the people that are in that commitment are strong and they communicate, it can't be broken. And that was a very beautiful point. You have to communicate. You can't let other people or other things that they say break up your marriage. You have to be one and you have to talk about that. So coming to a close, they bring everybody into the room as a conclusion and Yanla wants to talk to everybody to get their perspective on what they've learned and she goes to each person and she says what have you learned what have you learned what have you learned and she asked Christian well, what did you think about this experience and what did you think and he said well I really wanted a different reaction from my mother and of course Shell his mom and Yanla just goes to the next person Ramisha's mother, I can't remember her name. What do you, what have you learned? And she said, I've learned that I need to be more present and I want to step up as a grandmother and be more involved with my grandchildren and talk to them more. I really want to do that. And she turns to Rita and she says, I'm here for you too. Let's do things. Let's go out more. Let's just talk. I'm here for you if you'd let me. And I was surprised that Rita grabbed her hand and said, okay, yes. But you could tell it's still something there just holding her back. She goes to Ramisha and says, well, what did you learn? She says, I learned that I can't expect Christian to be something that he's not. This is his personality. I have to let him be him. He's not this uh, fantasy of this alpha male that I wanted to mold him into. I need to realize that my husband is the way that he is, and I have to accept that. And also, I can't be my worst critic. I can't keep beating myself up about trying to be perfect or what others think about me. I just need to be me. And Christian says, you know what? That six-year-old that's inside of me, he needs to grow up, and he, that he was going to get help, help for that. And she turned to Rita, and Rita says, I'm going to start doing the work. And Iyanla said, well, what does that mean? She says, I realized that there's a lot. And you could tell she was kind of holding back and you could see that she was tearing up. She was fighting it again. She was holding it down. And, but it was good to hear that she at least thought that way. And Iyanla said, well, that's good. That's great. But my advice, this is unsafe. This whole group together is unsafe. Emotionally, you guys need to take a break from each other. You all need to personally, individually get help get counseling and deal with some issues that you all are dealing with because in the meantime emotionally this is not safe because everybody on that couch even though they seem pretty cordial and calm and counseling now that a lot of this stuff has been brushed up and a lot of things are in the air and true emotions stuff like that can cause a physical fight <laughs> stuff like that is damaged when you damaging when you have all of that emotion going on and confusion of what to do with it next and it's all balled up and you're in front of each other and you see each other Woo, I agree with Iyana that is very, very dangerous. And that could lead into something that the kids should see. Because you have to remember there are children involved. There are children that are watching 
Your every move, watching what your grandmother do, does, watching what your dad does, watching what your mother does. You have to be aware of that. Kids are watching that. You don't want to start that cycle all over again. So individually, she recommended that they take a break and they all learn from this and that it just doesn't stop here because that was just the tip of the iceberg and opening up that top to start healing and they haven't even began to start healing yet at the end of the episode we see how they have kind of the summary of how everybody is doing and it said Ramisha and Christian their marriage is better than ever so clearly they're starting their work to keep going and make their marriage stronger and Rita says you know despite her efforts they still don't understand her and she doesn't come around and she's just happy with her animals so just a side note for me, this episode, I see why it was broken into two parts because there was a lot going on, you know, and I just feel that what I learned from this episode, until people are ready to meet you halfway with your healing, if it's causing any type of turmoil or, or bringing you down, causing you sadness, causing you depression, you have to get rid of it. Even if it's your own family, even if it's the people you care for, if it's not helping you heal, it's not a bad thing sometimes that you take a break from each other until you get it right. And I don't think Rita is ready. She's not at that point to where she can admit or even start that process into her healing. I really think that Miss Rita has suffered something very traumatic because to be that cold and to be that distant and to not show any emotion, something happened to Miss Rita. And I really hope that they do another part with her coming back and her finally saying, okay, look, this is what it is. These are all the cards that are on the table. Let's talk about it. Because something that was mentioned in part one, her father suffered from mental illness and she brushed over that. And she wouldn't go any deeper in that. She's been divorced. She was going through the issues with her dad. Man, oh man, how that must have affected her. She probably feels like she has nobody in her corner. Nobody loves her. And seeing her son having a very healthy marriage and people have other family members that are helpful that are around them, that can create spite. So Rita is probably very spiteful, maybe a little jealous, maybe angry that she didn't get a successful marriage. We don't know. We're just left to say, well, maybe this, maybe that. Because unfortunately, Rita, she's not open and she's not talking. So I'm really concerned for that. And also Ramisha. Ramisha, when she finally talked to her mom about how she felt when her mother was on drugs, that was just a little bit about how she felt. And a lot of that she's been keeping in. And it took for a lot of her to just cry and to just show that she had this anger that was balled up. She has this image as if everything's okay, but there is a hurt child deep in there. I really hope that they follow up with that family and that we see progression. So subscribe, you guys. I enjoyed this season. On to the next show. One ends, another one takes its place. I'll make that announcement very soon. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Bye.